You were recording other girls. Thank That's bull****. They do it pretty good, okay? Overall, a couple examples. Like how she interfaces with the audience and stuff in her posture. The girl from Haiti, she has good posture, okay? That was good. Failure to read the room. Failure to read your wife's reaction. Failure to read your wife's energy. I mean, to be honest with you, <laughs> I don't really believe that anybody should be marrying anybody if you know that you're unable to even read your wife's mood, your partner's mood. Because right now, <laughs> Jasmine's mood is not <laughs> what Gino thinks it is. But listen, let's continue. But he is just giving me pervert vibes. What is he gonna use this video for? Better? Or you are gonna be using those videos for being masturbating? I mean, to be fair though, she has got a fair point because, you know, b bouncing off the fact that, you know, it was real that Gino pretty much has an addiction to online situations and it's something that potentially is what's affecting him with his actual real life intimacy. She's got a point. You know, you're out here, you know, where this, pardon me, where this pageant, you know, obviously with all these women in, 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 in amazing shape, you know what I mean? Pretty much in the same shape as what Jasmine is. So therefore, she knows that these women are representing the type that he likes. You know what I mean? And uh, while she's out there doing her thing, he's also at the same time paying attention to other women and recording them. I mean, listen, paying attention to them, you can't avoid that. It is what it is. But then recording them? <laughs> That's crazy. And to be fair with you, did he even get permission to even record these other people? Did these people even know? I mean, obviously now we know because obviously it's not just on the show. Clearly there's been an approval, blah, 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 blah. But what I'm saying is initially when he took out his phone to record these women, like, yo, Bro, that's that's violation of people's privacy. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's very different if you were uh, recording Jasmine doing her walk and there just happen to be people in the background. That's a different type of situation. You know what I mean? But you're purposely singling out people. That that that, that is definitely perfect vibes. She's not lying in that aspect. But Gino means no harm. But let's continue. You're not the jury. But the reason why I brought you here is to support me. Everybody else is better than me. The jury determines that it's okay, but not my husband. Pointing out, like, who's better than but you're me? Not, that's, and that you're you not supposed them. to take it like this. And this is what I say, and this is what I mean by Gino means no harm. Because, you know, he's just trying to be helpful. Obviously, he's turned up there, a pageant that obviously he's paying for anyway, you know what I mean? And he just wants to, you know, support and help Jasmine the best way possible. But here's the thing, though. Sometimes when you try and support your partner, really and truly all they want is for you to just be there and just to praise them and just to make them feel good and just to be that shoulder clack to cry on if things don't go south. Not, they don't always want you to be actually actively involved in what they're doing. In this situation, you know, obviously it's easy to say that Jasmine didn't want you to be actively involved in the situation because that's why that's why she's been taking all these lessons and meeting all these people and that's why she's here today to obviously get the feedback that she needs because obviously she wants it from these experts, blah, 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 which is understandable. So really and truly, I just for like i'm not gonna say that gino was wrong to do what he did in terms of trying to be actively helping jasmine but at the same time though he has to recognize who his woman is is she the kind of person that wants you to help her in these situations or somebody or the kind of woman who just wants you to be there for her in these type of situations you see what i'm saying and to be fair that can vary depending on the situation as well gino has just failed <clears throat> to do that and that's just the grand scheme of it but again though recording random women and then telling your and then telling your your wife hey so she was doing this she was doing that and you wasn't doing this i'm not gonna lie to you unless unless my wife was to directly tell me that she wanted to do that there's no way i'm doing that that is fire right there are you mad <laughs> so you got videos of other women on your phone have you now what the hell is this all about <laughs> that's I'm for trying, you. no i want you to win no, I feel more insecure. And I know you can't. I feel more insecure now. Now, regarding her feeling more insecure, I think, to be honest, Jasmine was just been over the top of that one in particular. I don't feel like it was necessary for her to be feeling more insecure personally. But at the same time, I understand it because we know that she's got insecurities. We know that when her insecurities are ever being gaslit, they're easily, easily triggered. You know what I mean? Or just as small as a thing can definitely make you feel how she feels. So I get why she feels the way she feels, but, you know, like... I feel like there should still be a point where Jasmine should be understanding. She should be like, listen, 
I get it. I understand you're trying to help me, but this is how I would prefer or how I want you to support me. And this is the issue with their, with their, with their relationship. Communication is rarely at a strong point. And this would have been that time for her to say, listen, I just want you to be here. To, I, oh no, I'm lying. What am I talking about? She really said to him that she just wants him to be there to support her. Sorry, my apologies. She did say that to be fair of you. But I think because Gina obviously isn't getting it and it's gone over his head, that's why she's probably progressing to that next stage of the jasmine that we know, the, the stage of, I just don't feel like you want me. <laughs> and respectfully, I get it. But it's freaking Jasmine, so it's kind of annoying. <laughs> because we know that this is how she's going to react. But to be fair with you, she didn't re react in the way we used to her react in terms of shouting and having meltdowns. To be fair, her reaction was more respectful than normal, so I give her credit for that. But nonetheless, though, Gina needs to do a better, do a better job at reading the room, and do a better job of understanding what his, what his wife wants from him, and also at the same time, do a, do a better job of even listening to what she's saying as well. You know what I mean? Despite the fact that he meant no harm. But with that being said, though, let's move on to the uh, next couple. Es poco que yo te lo pido. Pero tú veo que es muy complicado para ti. Y yo darte un mil dólares y tú cambiar tu contraseña del banco. Anteriormente, tú sabes mi clave de la cuenta. ¿Y qué pasó? Gastar, gastar, gastar. Cuando necesitabas dinero, empezar a sacar dinero de ahí. Manuel saying I'm irresponsible with money is absolutely laughable. I kind of feel like I may have to do another video on this, on, the, on, on, on this couple, to be fair, because I feel like there's layers to what we went down this episode. But um, here's the thing. <laughs> we know that communication for these two is just non-existent and the fact that communication is non-existent we just that that tells me that this relationship shouldn't shouldn't even still be a thing marriage definitely shouldn't have happened as we spoke about before but at the end of the day the way i'm looking at it and i'm situation is that if you're going to give him money but then he's then going to change the password that doesn't make sense which i would which i would have thought would have been the pin code but whatever it is what it is but that is very very strange that she's giving him money but then he would then change the passcode to his bank account or whatever it is because he doesn't like the way that she spends the money that she earns. I don't know how that makes sense. I really can't. There were, there were a few things in this, in this uh, relationship, in this episode with um, Ashley Emmanuel that I just was like, what? And this is, this is one of them. I don't get how that makes sense, to be honest with you. And to be fair, the way Manuel was trying to play it down, because if we go back to the very beginning, it's something particular. And, you know, it starts off here by saying, I'm not asking you for a lot of money. But yet, we know that she's giving you 1K. We know that you then asked for an extra 300. And we know that every time, and I know, and we also know that since you've been actually, all you ever do is complain about is, um, all, you ever do, all you ever do is complain about her spending. But then, but then you're entitled enough to ask him for more, more money. So basically, he wants Ashley to spend less on herself and give more money to him so he can send it back home to his kids, to whoever else. I mean, listen, hypocrisy. I can't say the blood. Dude. Hypocrite. Let me just say that. I can't say the freaking word I wanted to say, to be honest with you. Hypocrisy. Ah! But you get what I'm saying. Let's continue. Affable. I work hard for my money. This is America, honey. You gotta work your ass off for that dollar. Not told what is happening with money that I'm providing. It is 100% not fair to me that I am not told what is happening with money that I'm providing. 1000%. I mean, listen, to be honest, it's very rare that you hear me say anything on Ashley's side, to be fair. It's rare you hear me say anything on both of their sides, to be honest to you. I have to be as neutral as possible because these two are both just loose cannons. But in this situation here, I do generally feel like Manuel was just out of line, but we continue. I can't do this right now. I need to go take a walk. This is too much for me. You're literally threatening to leave? Boom, bam. The moment that Ashley starts saying about money, this and that, and, you know, obviously how she's not going to give him or whatever, whatever, what does he do? He says, well, in that case, if you're not going to give me money to send home to my family, in that case, I'll just have to go back to Ecuador and uh, do what I was doing before. <sighs> ah, if these two truly did love each other, truly did have emotion for each other, this shit right here, wouldn't be happening would not be happening and that's why we all sit here and question why the hell are you still together i don't give a damn do you know what the crazy thing is something that people forget love is not a feeling love is a freaking choice the fact that these two choose to love each other blows my mind because if you ask me personally 
I don't think he chooses to love her. He chooses to tolerate her because every episode he calls her crazy. There's a big difference between choosing to love someone and choosing to tolerate someone. Recognize which one you're doing. No dinero que somos enviando a Ecuador es irando directamente a los hijos. No sé, hay libertad. Le está enviando quizás a la novia, quizás. Manuel es en contacto directamente con su ex novio. It's crazy because obviously Ashley is now learning that he's still in contact with his baby mom. Which to be fair should have come as no surprise. But it's what Ashley says next that I sat and I said to myself, yeah, you messed up yourself. He told you that he wasn't having conversations with his baby mom at all? That has been the way he's been presenting it to me. Like Key phrase, that is the way he has been presenting it to me. That is the key word itself in particular in that sentence, presenting. So you've never actually asked him whether or not he's in contact with his baby mom or not. You've just assumed, based on the things he has said, because he's presented in that way. I'm sorry to say, but that technicality is it's a crucial one. You should have directly asked him, hey, are you in contact with her, yes or no? Let me know. But the fact that he has kids with her, why wouldn't he be in contact, contact with her? But I get it. However, he has spoken about her. He's obviously spoken about her in a way that implies that he's not, which I understand why she's taken, why she's gone off that. But at the same time, that she knows that Manuel is very, very, you know, I mean, she knows that he lacks being transparent. She knows that he's very secretive. He's very vague. You know what I mean? And she knows that you have to ask him specific questions to get specific freaking answers out of him. And the fact that she didn't do that, that's on her. So she can be annoyed with him all she wants. But if you ask me personally, it's on her. Because she knows what he is like. He doesn't understand that he has two children by the same woman. I understand that he needs to send her money for those children. My issue here is that Manuel painted a picture that they don't talk. Oye, 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 ¿qué es que le has dicho vos a alguien que aquí está que me pisa la cabeza? Dice que le has dicho a alguien que yo he enviado dinero cuando estaba contigo. Cuando salimos a beber igualmente cuando peleé con alguien, ¿quién pagó todo eso? Yo, yo pagué todo. Entonces, justamente enviar dinero. You see, this whole scene is something particular for me personally. I found it rather strange because you see, he obviously comes in, obviously she, she comes home, asks him to ring to, to, to ring his friend, and in the conversation, he wants to say, Hey, let's tell the truth. Like, 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 she's obviously going to say, Why haven't you told me about the ex? And also on top of that, she also found out that um, when they went to New York, that she was that that, that, that he was just sending money to the ex when he was in New York as well. I don't feel like the, the question that she was asking was even answered in this scene. It rings his friend. Hey, what did you do to Ashley? <laughs> uh, she's about to stop my head in. So that one is that one is comical. Jesus. <laughs> and then and then when you go into it and then when you spam into her face and this is the face that you see, you generally feel like you, you generally think that she's going to stomp his head in. But anyway, why? Why did you tell Ashley? Um, I sent money when I was with you and he goes, ah, ah, and we went out drinking after, you know, I fought with Ashley, which obviously proceeds to saying that, and who paid for that? So in this conversation here, this conversation is more about the fact that his friend paid for the drinks and paid for certain things. But there was nothing in this conversation that actually confirmed that he did send money to his baby mom when they were in New York. Because in reality, his friend literally responds by saying, I pay for everything. But when he says he pay for everything, I'm assuming he means he paid for all the drinks. All right, cool, fair enough. Because he wouldn't have sent money back to, uh, to, to, to Manuel's family because Ashley gives him that money. Do you see what I'm saying? Make that make sense. And then of course, in this situation in particular here, my apologies. Sorry, I had a cough there. Where did I get the money? Um, supposedly, uh, um, supposedly sent money. And this is where it gets quite interesting because in that moment in time, the friend literally says to him, tell Ashley, talk to Ashley and tell the truth and then hangs up. And in that moment in time, his reaction is, huh, see, do you see, you see, you see, you're crazy. But there was nothing answered though. Ashley calls up, Ashley says, listen, he's deflecting. And to be fair with you, he was because there was nothing even answered in that moment in time. Honestly, this guy is a very interesting person. But again, though, I don't feel sorry for Ashley because she continues to be in a relationship with this man, knowing the fact that their communication is absolutely pants and knowing the fact that he's never going to communicate in the way she would like him to. And that is to communicate like a real honest freaking person. <laughs>
And then you got him out here doing the freaking Joker laugh. Like, <laughs> I do not TV face. Sorry. I apologize. That is not the Joker laugh. RIP Heath Ledger. I apologize. RIP. No, that was the guy with the Batman, not freaking Joker. My apologies. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Anyway, the people that know what I'm talking about, they don't know what I'm talking about, but that wasn't. The, that was the person that voiced Batman, no Joker. But nonetheless, though, it doesn't matter. Either way, though. <clears throat> crazy because you made me crazy okay mm. <laughs> Stop laughing if you ask me personally actually you're crazy because you choose to stay with him it's just that simple you know she can sit there and blame him all she wants which listen i get it but at the same time you still choose to be in this man's life you still choose to have him in your life he said he's gonna go back to ecuador if you don't give him money for his family so let him go let him go and do your first self-worth listen we know that uh, on social media Ashley has been doing a lot of work with her weight loss journey. She's even she's even doing the spinning bikes and whatnot. And to be fair, even in this season, we've seen her at least, especially in this episode. I've seen that in this episode, she's a whole lot slimmer than what she was in the last episode that she was on. I'm pretty sure. So she's obviously doing a lot of work on herself physically. It's time that she starts to do work on herself mentally. But generally speaking, usually when you start to work on yourself physically, you usually start to also work on yourself mentally. Give or take depending on who you are you know what i'm saying but if i was there, that's what you need to do because right now your so your 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 physical wealth has become so much more superior so much more better so much more healthier but this here yeah you, you, you need you need to go on the journey to find that because that's what's screwing you up the most but nonetheless though let's move on to the uh, next couple you act like that you know i'm gonna call you a slut i don't know too many words in portuguese but what am i supposed to do not defend myself all right for an eye man that is going to be one of the most childish things I've ever heard in my whole entire freaking life. Okay, fair enough. She was saying some mean things or saying things that were uncalled for, should I say. Calling her slut in response doesn't do anything. How does that help anything? And then, of course, she then retaliated for a drink in your face, which, again, is unacceptable. Both their behaviors was definitely unacceptable. But at the end of the day, this whole eye for eye nonsense, like, yo, John, guess what? You are a 90-day fiancé. You are not in a freaking Wild Wild West freaking film or anything like that. Humble yourself, eye for an eye. This is a pop fiction. Humble yourself. This isn't a flipping, you know, action film. No, no, no. It's not. It's none of that. This is just a simple TV show that you're on. Okay, behave yourself. Is that is just ridiculous? The most dumbest thing ever. And to be honest with you, regardless of how she's behaving, to scoop lower than her level, and then she scoops even lower than your level. To be fair, if you ask me, it seems to me as if uh, John and uh, Thais's friend are pretty much a match, a match made in heaven. <laughs> but of course, we know that you're taking with Megan now, you know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, let's continue. Sat with Natalie throwing drink in John's face, you know, he deserves it. And then we got Thais over here pretty much supporting her friend saying that yes, he deserves the drink. This is the problem. Accountability is a myth in this whole freaking scene. John is, John is not taking accountability for his actions. Her friend is not taking accountability for actions. And then Thais is also neglecting to basically pull them both up for both behaving like freaking fools. But you know what though? This is what happens when you watch a show based on freaking children. I might as well go back to watching freaking Rugrats and I really dislike that show. Sorry for the people that loved it. <laughs> Let's continue. Call someone. I don't, think, I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right that she just like like said John's a bad person. Let's get it on and then we got Patrick also being just as bad as Thais. Every single person in this whole freaking scene is just terrible. They're, they're all just terrible. They're all childish. Like honestly, why couldn't there have been one person who stood up and said, "Listen, you saying slut was wrong and you for a drink was wrong." Where is the maturity? Where is the adult in this conversation? And to think that there's two people in this scene that are actually parents. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not knocking their parenting to their own child. But you think that because they're both parents, they would know how to, you know, humble two people and say, "Hey, you both need to be accountable for your BS," and not and not actually pretty much instigate it. Nonsense. Let's get it on before. I think she's worried the same thing happened with me. So. Oh, I think she was just being protective. The fact that her friend was literally projecting something that happened in her past. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. And now husband and wife are having a back and forth conversation about you're defending him. Well, she didn't say anything. He said, come on. Where is the maturity here? This whole this whole scene could have been dealt with in one simple move. Hey, you, you, you're wrong. Behave yourselves. That's it. 
But no, now they're going back and forth. That's one of the reasons that you shouldn't be here in Brazil. Don't cry me a river when they start trouble and the big bad wolf blows their house down. Oh my god. No, I prefer to see him the rest of the trip. I have nothing else to add with this, with, with, with these, uh, which is every single person that's involved in this scene. The level of childishness is surreal, honestly. <laughs> they all need to go back. They all, they all need to go back to school and be taught manners and go back to being kids and be taught manners. But maybe it's the problem. Maybe, may, maybe the families that these that these adults were were raised in were families where being told manners and being told um, and being taught obviously what respect is. Clearly, it was something that was neglected by their parents. Do you know what I'm saying? So in that case, don't go back because. <laughs> but you know what? It is what it is. It's all over and done with now. I hope they've learned something from it, which obviously they haven't because they're all bickering about it. But all people that are watching this, you learn that hey, it's not cool to call someone a slut, nor is it cool to throw a drink at people. Okay, and if you're ever in the situation with people who do this, hold them both accountable. Simple as that. Mm hmm. But with oh yeah, and also if you've got a friend that likes to project their energy onto your relationships. With your peoples, listen, really and truly, you need to have, either have one, have a conversation with that friend and say to them they need to fix themselves or you need to just not be friends with that person because that person could easily become the reason why you end up single again. Don't forget that. But hey, we, uh, we continue. Once again, Sophie's walking out that door and she's going back to K's. God, Jay, like, you look really sad. She's sad. I'm sad because my wife is always leaving. But just remember, there's two sides to every story. I she don't. Sophie has always been taken care of. No, she hasn't. I remember in LA. Before we even get to that point, it's in particular, to be honest with you. <clears throat> I feel like Sophie and Rob, I feel like I feel like I may have to make an another video on them too, because again, I just feel like there was layers to this uh, to this whole scene, do you know what I mean? But um let's just go back because I want you to just notice something about Rob and Claire in, the, in this scene. Once again, Sophie's walking out that door and she's going back to K's. Oh yes, this point. <laughs> I don't know why Rob is wasting his time with somebody that keeps running away from him. That doesn't make any sense. That is not a healthy relationship. If somebody keeps running away from you each time there's an issue, that person isn't for you. That person doesn't care for you. That person probably doesn't respect you. And that person is probably somebody that loves to play games. And also somebody that probably prioritizes everything else but your relationship. Yeah, generally speaking, the respect levels for you doesn't exist. God, Jay, like, you look really sad. She's sad. I'm sad because my wife is always leaving. But just I feel like he needs to find a way to really send that message loud and clear, loud and clear to Sophie. Saying it clear doesn't help you. It's interesting because, of course, if we go back to the screenshots that I obviously exposed uh, regarding um, Rob and Claire's relationship before being in a show, which showed that they had a health relationship, it's interesting because in this scene here, it's kind of a glimpse of that, isn't it? Because we saw that before that Rob was comfortable talking to Claire about his relationship with Sophie. It seems as if he's in that position right here in this scene itself, in, this scene itself in particular. Isn't that interesting? But um, <clears throat> let's just uh, get back into it. Because my wife is always leaving. But just remember... There's two sides to every story. I she, don't. Sophie has always been taken care of. No, she hasn't. I remember in LA, she dreaming I'm starving. Can you send me some food? I went crazy because that's the only thing I grab at 7 a.m. before work. I don't wake up early enough to cook myself breakfast. And Sophie kept bringing up how I was telling her what she could and couldn't eat. But Are you going over the granola bars? This one is face because you're pissed off at something. You're always pissed off. Fine. I'm not even pissed off. Right, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm very calm right now. And I'm, I'm sorry, just... Yeah, I'm before we even get into the conversation about the granola bars, notice how before Sophie entered the room, Rob and Claire was having a very peaceful conversation. You know what I mean? Like they were being very respectful to one to one another. But the second that Sophie came into the picture, the dynamic changed. Now, when I say dynamic change, I don't mean that Claire and Rob's uh, Claire and Rob's conversation got worse. It didn't. Claire got up and literally just removed herself from the situation, which is a very, very, very wise thing to do. But I will say this: <laughs> the way that she's coming now, it's like, hold on a minute, what are you trying to do here? Here's a fun fact. Now, going back to the interview that I had to write at some point, the one that maybe you've seen, if you haven't seen it, I recommend you watch the interview writing. There was a conversation that I had with him where he said that there was a point where he caused so much fuss with the production team about how they were portraying him that there was then a, a, a week where they skipped 
their their episode. They skipped the episode, right? And then the, and the week when they brought them back in, they flipped it. So therefore, Riley actually looked sane and he wouldn't continuously look like this person that was just chasing this woman. Do you see what I'm saying? Because originally, he looked like the villain the whole time. Interestingly, obviously, we recently did an interview with, with Claire and she was obviously exposed on the fact that her relationship with Rob is actually quite healthy off air, but, but or at least it was once upon a time. I do wonder though, if they did re-edit this scene before uploading this episode, to put it in a in a perspective that it does show that Rob and Claire can actually have a respectful conversation because up until then we never saw that. So I do wonder. <laughs> but nonetheless, though, let's get into the whole granola bars. But let me play. Let me let me play some more first. She brought she brought it up. I just tried to talk to her about it. You eat a whole box of granola bars when that's the only thing. But if I'm I want to eat a whole box of granola, I should be able to do that. So, you know, originally when I watched this, I was like, oh, these two having another petty conversation again, another petty disagreement again. But then I processed it and I said to myself, to be honest with you, I know what it's like to be in that, in that type of position where you tell someone respectfully that, hey, I'm working all these hours or whatever, whatever it is, okay? It, and these, this, this specific meal itself in particular or this snack, this is something that literally helps me go for by the day. Could you please just not touch that one or maybe get some more and at least at least just make sure that no matter what there is some available for me no matter what and i feel like this is something that it must be go through you know what I mean? but just but but your food choice or your snack choice might be different but when you find out that that, that it's gone and i can understand especially if you're the person that's always going out working and then you come back and the person who isn't working is basically shot you in the foot by taking that one little snack that you need. Do you see what I'm saying? So to be fair with you, I do understand Rob's frustration with the Grano situation, to be fair. And the way Sophie's handled it is unacceptable because she literally said, well, if I want to have the whole box, I'll have the whole box. That means she's neglecting his needs. She's neglecting a simple, simple request where he literally said, hey, can you just, just leave me the Grano bars, please? That's it. And it's crazy because the way... She sees the Grano, the Grano bar situation as a small situation, which is interesting because if it's a small situation where you think it's okay for you to have them all, well then, if it's small to you, then why is it not small enough for you to leave the bars in the first place? Do you see what I'm saying? You know, that's the thing I find about people when it's when people can take a situation, but like, oh, but it's, it's not, it's not that, it's not that deep, it's not that big. Well, if it's not that big, it's not that deep, then why did you do it? Why didn't you leave it alone? Or why, did you, or why did you not at least replace it because it's such a small situation? So really and truly, I do feel like she should have either one, respected his wishes, or two, and be like, you know what, babe, I do apologize. I'll make sure that whenever you come back and you need a quick little snacks, I, I, I'll have, if I eat something that you want, I'll have at least something else or turn it ready for you. Do you see what I'm saying? But that's just my humble opinion because, I, yeah, this is, a, this, is, this is the position. I wouldn't say that I have been in like this before but i've been in it in a certain different way you know what i mean in a in a in a more healthier way should i say yeah because they had a solution to it didn't have none of this petty nonsense <laughs> in front of me and said there are other people that can make me so much happier do you, do you don't know, think but, people, like someone can make me, me happy you don't, i would like to i this know what, what i need to how can you say to someone that hey d like like uh, I, I, i'm pretty sure this is this is not the first time rob has actually mentioned this statement itself in particular to be fair let me go back to it real quick in front of me and said there are other people that can make me so much happier do you, do you know think but, but, hold on, to say that there are other people who can make me so much happier if somebody said that to me i would say okay i i would happily say to you okay then bye go find them i'm done <laughs> all right okay great stuff go find them be happy if i can't make you happy then that's fine go and find someone who can make you happy that's it we're done and dusted it's over and done with so i'm not playing those games that is a petty stupid thing to say to somebody bye then if I'm stopping you from your happiness, please go find your happiness. That's it. You know, I'm not going to stop you from your happiness if I'm not giving you that. Are you mad? That's what Rob should have done. But here's the thing, though. We're dealing with a man that obviously isn't exactly um, masculine, so it is what it is. Yeah. If someone can make me, me happy, you don't, I would like to... I know what, what I need to reflect on. You don't you need, need to tell me what to You need to figure out. So he says, let me talk. And in the whole time when he said, let me talk, what happened? She didn't even let him talk. Sophie does not respect you. That is just the grand scheme of it. And I've always said this, the moment that a woman does not respect you as a man anymore is the moment your relationship is done. I promise you now, when a woman does not respect you anymore, she does not love you anymore. They ain't, if there's any chance of her even ever having any type of unconditional love for you, it is non-existent. It's not going to happen for a, for a woman to be in a position to love, to unconditionally love a man. She has to respect him first. 
For a woman to generally just love a man for who he is and what he does, she doesn't have to respect him. She can love you for just being you. But being in love with you unconditionally, respect is a must. That's why when you, before you marry someone, you have to know that person respects you as a man. This is what I'm saying. She doesn't respect you. But if she did, she would allow you to speak. But then again, at the same time, if you had the correct masculine energy, you would have been able to control the situation where she would have been like, where she would have humbled herself and not interrupted you and allowed, and, and allowed you to finish your sentence. But now, nah, you allow her to walk all over you. You allow her to do madness. Yeah, boy, man. <laughs> you need to grow some balls. <laughs> Where's your backbone, bro? Out if... Who am I you can be with without being pissed off all the time? Sophie, I have listened to you and listened to you and I've said sorry and sorry and sorry and you walk out. I don't, I don't do that to you. I do listen I to you. I don't do that. Like, like what the f can I do so you don't leave? You, all right, tell me what I need to do while you You should have asked me. <laughs> oh my days. Sophie is hard or what? I mean, to be fair, she's hard work for Rob because Rob doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, listen, you you bring Sophie into my life. I would have humbled her attitude a long time ago. No, no, no. I would have been like, listen, listen, listen. I'm not tolerating none of this nonsense. Nah, you need to learn to behave yourself. Otherwise, we are we are not going to be a thing. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I, obviously, I deliver it in a far different way. You know what I mean? Um, uh, in a respectful way. Don't get it twisted. This, yeah, but. I'm not surprised that Rob doesn't know how to, you know, conduct himself in this relationship with, with Sophie, to be honest with you. About what you could do to show me that you've changed and reflect on yourself and really realize and be accountable about the whole thing. If we wasn't married. <laughs> She's telling you how to be. Oh, my days. It's crazy. Oh, my days. Listen, accountability has to go both ways in this relationship. That's the grand scheme of it. Oh, my goodness. But the level of gas, she is a problem. Uh, when Sophie's in a picture, problems happen. <laughs> I mean, listen, Claire did say that she spoiled, that she did spoil her, spoil her, and that's why she's she the way she is. But either way, though, even though she's been spoiled, it can be humbled. Do you know what I mean? And to be fair, if it can't be humbled, then you gotta bounce. You know what I mean? For me, myself in particular, I was in a similar situation at some point. You know what I mean? And listen, I had to humble this person. But you know what's crazy though? I I found that the more I humbled this person. They, they 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 just wasn't in, in a they just wasn't in a stage of their life where they were ready to understand the perspective of what was actually going on about the fact that I had to keep humbling humbling them way too many times. So therefore, in the end, I was like, listen, I've had to say certain things more than twice. I don't like to say things more than twice. You know what I'm saying? Once it gets to a third point, I'm switching off. And I and, and for me, I was like, you know what? It's cool. I have to go my separate ways. Because at the end of the day, I'm not out here trying to just disturb my peace. You know what I mean? Okay. You know what I mean? Because I know my ability as a man. I know my ability to be, to, to, to bring in that correct masculine energy. Do you see what I'm saying? And I know that the, a woman that is in the, um, a woman that is at the right stage of her life, the right time of perspective, I know she's going to respect that. You know what I mean? She's going to understand that. And repetition isn't going to be a thing for me. But there are some women who aren't necessarily ready for that just yet. Do you see what I'm saying? Because maybe they haven't got to that certain perspective of their life, which is fine. And in that moment in time, I'd rather just let you go rather than allow you to, 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 to make myself sound like a freaking broken record. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I ain't got time for that. <laughs> no, I ain't got time for that. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, I understand in this life, everybody has a journey. You know what I mean? And everybody's journey is going to go at a certain pace. And I just know that I, and I just know what pace my journey is at right now. It wasn't then, you see what I'm saying? Rob needs to recognize the pace of his journey. He needs to recognize where he's at. Because right now, where he's at and where Sophie's at, completely different. But to make it worse, these two, to make it worse, Rob is at a stage in his life that he shouldn't even still be at. That's what makes it worse. And he's not going to get there as long as he stays in his relationship with Sophie. At least based on my observations of what we, what we are shown anyway. And also even what I was shown by Claire, do you know what I mean? Obviously the video that I, that I released with all the screenshots, if you haven't seen it, of their conversations, the way he conducts himself, to be fair, tells me that he still has a lot of learning to do in his life. He still has a lot of manning up to do. <sighs> I don't think I would be right here right now like I am now. Not at all. I'm not going to hold my breath and wait for her to come back. I'm going to start thinking about what life is like without her. That should have been your energy from the very get go, but let's be real though, you're just saying that for the sake of saying it. You're not saying it because you mean it. Because if he, if he meant it, he wouldn't say it. he would do it. This is what I'm saying. If he meant it, he would have left it first, said I'm done, and then he'd have been like, listen, 
I had to leave because of this, this and that. People that generally say that, oh yeah, if this wasn't happened, da, 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 you're just saying it just for the sake of saying it, but it makes you, it's as if, as if it makes you feel like you're tough or something like that when you're not tough. You know what I mean? You're still a baby, but it is what it is. Nonetheless though, nonetheless though, nonetheless, nonetheless, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to leave it there, okay? And I'll be back again with another video and this one will be breaking down uh, what happened this week with Michael and Angelo, okay? I'm um, going to do that on a separate video, okay? Uh, but at the same time, I may be back again with another version of Rob's one and maybe you saw another version of uh, Ash J Manuel's one as well because I thought there's certain things in those videos that could, be, could have been spoken a bit, about a bit more. Maybe even Jasmine and Gino's as well, to be honest with you. But hey, we'll get there. But nonetheless, though, please enjoy this video. Oh, but nonetheless, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And please look forward to my next following video on Angelo Michael. But with that being said, thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, peace.